In today's notes, we're going to take a look at some similarity postulates and theorems, and then you're going to learn how to prove two triangles are congruent. So at the top of the page, I just wanted you to recall that two triangles are similar, in this case ABC to DEF, if corresponding angles are congruent and their sides are proportional. So that means angle A would be congruent to D based on the statement, B congruent to E, and C congruent to F. And remember, when you're solving a proportion, you have to apply the cross product property, which states that the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes, which you saw in middle school. And that means that the product of your means, so A times D is equal to the product of the extremes, B times C. Looking at our first theorem, it states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles are similar. So you don't need that third angle because if two angles of a triangle are congruent to two angles of another, that must mean that the third angles are congruent. So rather than doing AAA, we only need the AA for angle angle to show that two triangles are similar. So let's look at question number one. What is the length of AB? Well, before I set this up, I know that angle DEC, this right angle, is congruent to ABC, and then angle C is congruent to angle C by reflexive. So these two triangles are similar. And looking at the lengths of the sides that I have, I do have a triple right here, the 5, 12, 13. And then in the other triangle, I'm only given the lengths of the sides of the two legs, the shorter leg and the longer leg. So I don't need the hypotenuse. If I was to set up a proportion to solve, you could do 5 to 12 is equal to x to 36 and solve. You get 12x equals 180, or x is equal to 15. You can also take a look to see that the longer leg went from 12 to 36. So that was triple, or times 3. So you can take the 5, and 5 times 3 is 15. So as long as you explain it or show some work um, with that method or explain it in words, you can do it that way rather than set up a proportion. But a proportion is just an easy way to solve and easy work to show. The side 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 postulate or theorem this states that if corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, um, then the triangles are similar. Okay, So if the corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional. So it's not side, side, side in terms of congruency. It's that all the sides are in proportion. So if this was 2, 3, 4, in order to be proportional, I could double each side 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 2, 6, 4 times 2, 8. As long as the ratio of AC to DF is equal to BC to EF, which is equal to AC over DF, Okay, then we can say that they are similar by side, side, side. So in the question at the bottom, we need to determine which two triangles are similar as only two are um, similar. So I'm just going to highlight the sides that I'm going to take a look at. I'm going to take a look at the longest side of each and the middle side. So my proportion or my ratio I'm going to take a look at is this ratio of 39 to 27 equal to, the next triangle, the longest to middle, would be MN and MP. So is that equal to 26 to 18? Or is that equal to longest of 56 to 36? So if you reduce these fractions, 39 and 27 share a common factor of 3. So divide out by 3, and we have 3 ninths. 26 and 18, or I'm sorry, 13 ninths. Those are both divisible by 2. So 26 divided by 2 is 13, and 18 divided by 2 is 3 ninths. So it looks like these are the two, but let's just check. Um, 56 over 36 
common factor of 4, so that becomes 14 over 9. So here's our two equivalent ratios, okay? So therefore, triangle, and that came from, I'll write ABC, and that was A was opposite the longest side. So opposite the longest side here, that would be similar to triangle P, and then opposite following in order would be P and M. The last postulate states that if the lengths of two pairs of corresponding sides, again, when I'm referring to the S's in these statements, it's because the sides are proportional. In the angles the sides form are congruent, then the triangles are similar. So the two sides that form this angle are AC and AB, and the two sides that form this angle D are FD and EF. If those sides are proportional, Okay, and angle A is congruent to D, then the triangles are similar by SAS. So I'm looking at this triangle here in number three. Overlapping triangles actually it says, is triangle ABC similar to triangle ADE? And explain. So angle A is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So if I look at the sides that form those angles, with the one triangle, it's DA and EA. So if we look at that side, 9 to 6, is that equivalent to the other triangle that forms angle A, the larger one would be CA and BA. So is that ratio equal to, well, I need to add 3 plus 9, 12, over 2 plus 6, 8. That reduces to, you can do a cross product or you can reduce the fractions, it's up to you. 9 6 reduces to 3 halves and 12 eighths reduces to 3 halves. So since the ratios are the same, okay, the sides are proportional. So, and we have the angle included between these two sides congruent. So the answer is yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So since AC to AB is equal to AE, AD, so the sides are proportional, and the angle formed, I should put angles, even though it's the same angle, the angles formed by these sides, which is angle A, um, is congruent then the triangles are similar. We'll go back to use one of these postulates to prove two triangles are similar. Our first theorem, the triangle proportionality theorem, states that if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides the two sides proportionally. So we have TU parallel to QS. If that happens, then RT to TQ is congruent to RU to US. So if we use different letters, if I call this A, B, C, and D, what that's stating is the ratio of A to B is the same as C to D. The converse also holds true. Remember, converse, we saw that with our parallel line theorems and our, uh, all the angles corresponding uh, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, so on and so forth. If we have the angles congruent, then the lines were parallel when cut by the transversal. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the angles are congruent. So you can switch the order of those statements and it still holds true. So if RT to TQ is equal to RU to US, then we can say that TU is parallel to QS. So looking at these examples, it wants to know in um, form 5 if MN is parallel to GH. In order for that to happen, the ratio of LM to MG 56 to 21 has to be equal to the ratio of LN 
to an H48 to 16. You can take a look at their cross products or reduce. So if I look at the cross products here, I have 896, which does not equal 1,008. If you reduce, you would get 8 thirds, not equal to 3 over 1. So therefore, they're not parallel. So since the ratio of LM to MG is not equal to the ratio of LN to NH, then MN is not parallel to GH. Number five, it says that DE or DE is parallel to AC. It says if the ratio of AD to DB is 2 to 5, so we're used to with ratio putting in the X. So you can put in the X, but you'll see what happens. You could just do 2 and 5. And then it says that CE measures 6. We're looking for BE. So if I do the ratio 5X to 2X, as I mentioned, you can just write 5 over 2 because the X's are just going to cancel. And that's equivalent to BE over 6. To do our cross products, we have 2 times BE equals 5 times 6, which is 30 divided by 2, and BE is 15. So now on to the proof. So at the top of the page, to prove two triangles similar, we're going to use the method of angle angle. Okay, you can prove two triangles congruent, as you read, that if two triangles are congruent, they are similar with a scale factor of one, but it's just shorter to get two angles congruent and then you're done. So in number six it says, given that PQ is congruent to PS, and that PR bisects angle QPS, so I'm going to call this angle one and angle two, uh, we need to prove that PQR is similar to PSR. So given the angle bisector number two, I know that angle one is congruent to angle two because an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. And in a triangle, so if I look at the triangle as a whole, if two sides of this triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So I'm going to call that angles 3 and angle 4. But remember, it has to be in the same triangle. So number 3, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. In a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. And we're done. We have here our first A for angle, angle, and here our second A. So this angle congruent to that angle, and this angle congruent to that angle. So number four, triangle PQR is similar to triangle PSR, and that's by angle, angle. And number seven, it says that angle one is congruent to angle Q, so I'm going to note that. And I need to prove that the two triangles, QPR and TSR, are similar. So in this question here, angle 1 congruent to angle 2 doesn't really give me anything for my second step. But I do know that angle 3, or actually um, I'm going to call this 2, because 1 and 2 are congruent, as well as 3 and 4. So here's a pair of vertical angles. So angle 3 congruent to angle 4 and then angle one congruent to angle two because all vertical angles are congruent. And then if I take a look and one is congruent to Q and two is congruent to one, that means that two is congruent to Q as well by substitution property. So I can take and replace the one down here with the Q. So angle 2 is congruent to angle Q by substitution. And then 4, again we have our angle angle, so triangle 
QPR is similar to triangle TSR.